Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Praise the Lord, all good thanks unto the Lord. He is good, and his mercy endures forever. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Ah, praise God, when I woke up this morning with a mind, stayed on Jesus. Went to bed last night with a mind, stayed on Jesus. Ah, oh, when you keep your mind on Jesus, he'll keep your mind in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on him. Oh, he's the right one to think about. Amen. When you have a peace of mind, you don't need to smoke no weed. God is all we need. Ah, uh, Jesus is the right one to think about. Ah, uh, when you have the helmet of salvation, put it on top of your head spiritually, which goes on your mind spiritually. So when the enemy tries to make you depressed, God will give you rest. That's why Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and there ye may find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I heard the voice of the Lord this morning. Oh, by the way, this came to my mind before I go any further. Uh, we praise God for the prayer requests. Backslider came back to Jesus on yesterday. So she was watching my YouTube. Uh, another young man said he wants to be baptized in Jesus' name. Let me know what state you're in. I know about New York City. Uh, if, you wanna, if you're living in New York, in the, in the New York City area, uh, you can go to my former church I came out of that I grew up on, in under the late Bishop William A. Bonner. Uh, the Greater Refuge Temple Church, pastored by Bishop Wright, Charles Wright, and the assistant pastor is Bishop Wilkins. So you can go on 124th uh, Street on 7th Avenue, Adam Clayton Power Boulevard, and you can get baptized in Jesus' name. Praise God, one Lord and one faith and one baptism. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, when you go down in his name, honey, you're going down in power. That's wonderful. Young man, I don't, I'm not really sure what state you're in, so leave it on the YouTube. I can help you with that. Uh, praise God for the Prince of Peace. There's other states where there are churches who baptize in Jesus' name. So God has the right church for you. Where you can get baptized in Jesus' name until I start my... Um, I'm, I'm almost in the process of having my building. We have the people. It took a while. I'm going to be baptizing people in Jesus' name. And there's other men of God out there who can baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Sister Woods, we prayed for you. We thank God for Sister Handmaiden, prayer warrior, woman of God, Diane Shepherd. Those who are praying for them along with me, we put them on the prayer list already that God is going to fill you with the Holy Ghost over again. Amen. God is restoring backsliders. God is still married to the backslider. All those of you out there who wants to come back home to Jesus, Jesus has open arms to welcome you with his love. Like Jesus welcomed the prodigal son, or rather the father uh, welcomed the prodigal son back home. Jesus actually told the parable about the prodigal son, okay? All right, let's go. Uh, I forgot, I almost forgot about this. I was talking about marriages. Uh, one of my sermons I ministered this week was pastor's daughters are being smothered in relationships. I didn't have the same video, but with a different title called Beware of Negative Influences. Let me see which one um, a good friend of mine is here. Left a good comment on here. Ah, okay, here it is right here. Praise God for the Prince of Peter Church of Acts, Houston. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You left a, a comment here. You always had a good spirit. Always supporting the YouTube channel. Supporting the word. I can tell you, you love the Lord. Praise God. And we love you too. Um, this was when this was written in response to uh, our sister mother Sarah Coverton, who has been such a blessing to the ministry. Um, she left a comment and I addressed it. Uh, praise God on YouTube. I was just wanted to bring uh, proper correction and love. I know she mean well. I know Anthony and Sarah Coverton has been such a blessing. I love them so much, and I didn't want you to take this the wrong way. Praise God, but it was concerning my marriage, my relationship. Um, and then I made a video about it to 
are dressed in love so people won't think negative about me and Lady Priscilla that we're uh, coming at each other or that we petty or that, you know, is is. I know many of you didn't see Lady Priscilla in a while. So I wanted to address that. Praise God. I addressed it on the YouTube. Why? Giving her her space. Praise God. I was mentioned about how she had a controlling, not a, not a controlling father, but a very strict father. She's a pre-K. Praise the Lord. And we're praying for her. God bless you, man of God. We thank God for the police force fighting crime here in New Jersey. We're praying for you. That God will protect. And God bless y'all too. Y'all too blessed to be stressed. And y'all too anointed to be disappointed. <laughs> I love y'all. God bless y'all. Have a great day. We thank God for the brethren today. We're praising God today in the police force as they fight crime, as they do doing great work. The nutrients are uh, they work on electricity. God bless her. That God will save them and fill it with the power of the Holy Ghost. As we say, it's time to stop the crime and say, Jesus, I want you to be mine. Let us all unite and let us not fight. And let's get with Jesus Christ. Ain't that right? <laughs> Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Let it be unity in the community. All right. So this is what you said, my good friend. You said, God bless you, Pastor. Yeah, I was talking about how I have a special message. So I want to make this very fast. I was talking about how... Uh, Praise God for the Prince of Peace. I was talking about here on YouTube uh, how uh, Lady Basilla had a, a very strict father, a pre-K. It's not easy for pre-Ks. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Man of God, though. Man of God. Bishop Dobbins and Mother Ruth. And she just shared with me some things I won't share in YouTube land because it's just between me and her. Praise God. And how she had a very strict upbringing. And, and, and it had it affected her. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Jesus. I guess wanted to give her her space let her have a time amen so you don't have to come on the youtube videos and do videos with me all the time you don't always feel comfortable praise god she loved the word she loved god i want to give her her space so sarah Coverton left a long comment on here uh as i talked about it on one of my videos so you responded um church the facts in houston you said god bless you pastor i want to address the comment that was made by Sister Sarah Coverton. With all due respect to you and your wife, I don't believe that she was referring to you all at all, but only leaving tips concerning marriage. I believe it could have been, it could have came across that way because of how she wrote it. I went to look at it, the comment, I think it was only grammar and writing mistakes from my discernment. She's pure and love you and your wife. And to the peer, all things are peer. God bless you, Pastor, for this awesome teaching. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comment. Uh, no, it's no question that she loves us. Yes, she, yes, there's no question about that. We know the love is there. We're talking about, we're talking about discipline and doing things in the proper uh, manner when you leave comments because people watch this stuff on YouTube. All right, let's see, is your discernment accurate? Praise God for the principally. Let's go back to the comment before I go any further. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I just like to bring uh, some clarity because the Bible said, "In all things, get an understanding, right? In all things, get an understanding." So let's go back to the comment. It said her grammar was; she made a lot of mistakes in her grammar. Okay, let's see. It said all things get an understanding. Give me a couple of seconds. Let's go to this video. Beware of negative influence in marriages. Let me see, this is the same one. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Now, all things the Bible said get a good understanding. Right, it seems like I can't find it right now. Unless she might have erased it. Uh, let's go to this. Give me a couple of seconds. Okay, she might have she might have deleted it. Okay. Because of the video I made. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. I want to get an understanding because certain things, certain ways I like certain things to be done in a certain way and in a certain manner. Okay, I don't see the comment here now. She must have erased it. Okay, let me. Well, she was telling me about the, her and this apostle. I said they had a conversation over the telephone. Uh, it didn't seem like it was bad grammar when she was writing that. I didn't see bad grammar. I didn't see no mistakes. Um, she was talking about how this apostle Sarah 
And I was talking about that. I don't believe in women apostles, but I believe that God uses women to be prophetess or missionaries, and God uses them in the church world. Now, I made a video on that that day. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. I didn't see bad grant. I didn't see any bad grammar on that. Didn't see no mistakes. But when it came to, she was saying, uh, "I want to give you tips. I want to give you tips." She was directing it to me, even though she might have directed it to others. But it was on my, uh, it was under my, on my YouTube comment. But it said the comment section. So she went into, "Don't be petty. Uh, don't be bossy." She kept repeating herself over and over. I got the message, but she went on and on and on. Don't be petty, don't be bossy, this, this. So I said, so I wanted to correct that because I don't want her thinking that me and my, me and Lady Adams is dealing with this. So I have to cover the reputation, cover her reputation and my reputation because when you leave a comment on the YouTube like that, I don't want people to just assume that that's what's going on. Oh, I don't see Lady Priscilla, so he must be bossing his wife around because if you want to, if, if you want to leave a comment, if it, it was if it was addressed to everyone out there if it was addressed to everyone out there then you leave that comment separately you go on top leave it in the comment but she left it on the certain comment that she talked about apostle sarah who i know nothing about and not to put her down but i don't know her praise god was that nothing to do with the conversation i was talking about here on the youtube god bless you young man i'm happy to see you today you're too blessed to be stressed. I've been praying for you. God is really blessing you. I like that smile you got on your face. God, have a great day, my good brother. I thank God for the young man that God is raising up. Yeah, I, I see greatness in him. You got to encourage the young people, especially the young men. They have it hard, but you shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath, if you keep God's holy word. So this is not to put it down because she's, she, she has a bill for heart. But I didn't, the vibe didn't set right. So I said, let me set this right now. There's other comment sections now that you can leave on a separate comment. Hold on one second. Praise God. There's other separate comments that you can leave on a separate comment without leaving on that. See, that could have went on a separate comment if it was addressed to everyone. But she left, but she went from talking to me about Apostle Sarah uh, they had a conversation over the phone. I don't know her. I'm sure she's a woman of God, even though I don't believe in women apostles. I believe they can be prophetess or missionaries. But all in the Bible, Jesus chose 12 apostles. They were all men. This is not a chauvinistic remark. I talked about the order. God over man, God over woman. Anyway, there was no mistakes on that part. Everything was correct. Until she got to the part where she was talking about me and Lady Priscilla saying, don't be petty, don't be bossy. And that's when the grandma looked like it was kind of off. Well, it was off because it was not meant for her to say anything. God didn't want her to say it. There's a time and place for everything. The Bible said, um, let all things be done in decency and in order. The love is definitely there. I love people. But I don't know if it's just a southern thing. Praise God. I know one time um, she said she wanted to come to me and Lady Priscilla's house. Praise God. And uh, i rather hear tips from a married person where they and their husbands are together, not one, not one in one state and she in another state. Not that they're not together mentally or emotionally, but if you're all separated and not really living together, then I'd rather hear tips from somebody and not to, I don't mean no harm, tips from someone where the marriage is together mentally, spiritually, and physically. So, I want to give it, give you understanding because the Bible said let all things be done in decency had in order. I have a certain way of doing things. I have a certain way of saying that the tips was very long. So I didn't want people to think, oh, well, you know, we bossing each other around and that we're fighting against each other just because you didn't see Lady Priscilla. Don't just assume that this is going on, even if she didn't mean that way, but it was said. So the reason why uh, when she was talking about other things, the grandma was perfect. So she got to that part because it was not meant for her to say that. God didn't want her to, to say that. God just wanted her to only pray. Praise God. So, uh, I wanted to get to this particular scripture before I get to the message. I want to speed it up. 
We love you. The Bible says, let all things be done in decency and in order. Let all things be done in decency and in order. Praise God. I have a certain way of doing things, y'all. I remember why I'm getting this right now. I remember when Sister Coverton said, hey, um, me and my husband want to come over to your house and visit you in New Jersey. Now, I have a certain way of doing things. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. I have a certain way of doing things. She didn't ask, where are you available? You know, what day can we come over to your house? I don't know, it's just a Southern thing. Not all people in the South is like that. And then they want to drive over to me and Lady Priscilla, not realizing that we was, on, well, we was only in a three year relationship. And we trying to get things together, trying to find another place. Uh, we were living in a small place. And I informed her, I said, I'll let you know when you're able to come. And then she said that her and her husband was driving to the area. Now see, I have a certain way of doing things. Now see, I wouldn't have did that. We're not talking about the love. We're talking about things being done in decency and in order and, and, and in a proper manner. You, you first ask first, can we come over? We're not talking about love. You ask the couple first, can we come over? Are you available that we can come visit your house? Definitely you want to come visit the church. We didn't get a church yet. But you want to come visit the house. Praise God. You just don't want to just invite yourself just over. You can love somebody, but still have discipline and still have consideration. That's what I would do. That's how I was raised. Praise God. You ask first. You don't just invite yourself and just drive and just, you know, just assume. So it's going back to assumption that we are available because that means we have to cook food. That means we have to make room. We don't know if they were staying in the hotel. Or you just wanted to see us for one day. You just don't just invite yourself. Yes, I know the love is there, but just be considerate. We're not talking about Anthony Coverton because you know he. I love Anthony. He's he's humble, just like Sarah Coverton. But I'm talking. I'm, I'm trying to teach how to be considerate. You can love somebody, but still be considerate. You have nothing to do with the love. It's do. I have a certain way of doing things. You just don't just. When well, we're coming over, I don't know. It's just a southern thing. Uh, uh, well, I know Diane Shepard. It's in, I believe it's in Alabama, very disciplined. Uh, Sister Linda, she comes from Alabama, very disciplined. Nobody said anything on the YouTube about Lady Priscilla and giving us tips. And myself, don't be negative, don't be petty. They just pray. Certain things you just pray about. Certain things you just keep to yourself. Praise God. Let things be done in decency and in order. So I let her know that we're not available because we are in transition we're doing transition. You know, you just don't come over to Jersey and just want to just invite yourself over to our house. So I know um, um, we didn't have enough room. That means we have to do this and that. See, I have a certain way of doing things. I don't know if it's a Southern thing. Hey, we love y'all. Oh, we love you. We're going to come over, y'all. We're going to give you this. We're going to give you that. And we're going to come over there tomorrow. We're going to be there in three days. What I even ask him, I'm not saying that they did that. I believe I was I believe that was Sister Coverton's idea. Praise God, because my brother did that one time, but in a different way. One time my brother, um, he framed a question, Lady Basilla, and didn't even inform me about it. Now I wouldn't did that to his wife, my sister-in-law. I would have said, uh, uh, hey brother, if she has a Facebook, I would have called my brother up in North Carolina. See, it's my consideration. Praise God. He, he called a sister in love. He called Lady Basilla's sister in love. Now, me, I wouldn't call, um, I wouldn't say to my sister in law, sister in love. I would just say sister in law. We're not saying that he's after her, but I have a certain way of doing things. Now, if I wanted to be friends with her on the Facebook, first, I would have been cons be considerate to my older brother. Say, brother, I would have called him up. I inboxed him and said, Is it okay that I can be friends with your wife? Who's my sister-in-law just giving you respect giving you that respect praise the Lord just because he's my brother doesn't mean I can go over his head even though he's older than me he's in North Carolina so I didn't do that to him I would have been more considerate to say brother is it okay that I can friend request your wife who's my sister-in-law so we can be friends on Facebook not just pop up and just friend request her and didn't tell him nothing it's about the respect that's what I'm trying to tell you see it's about doing things in the proper manner look what the Bible says. I was trying to get the scripture see did it come out because I like order. Are we perfect? No, we all make mistakes, but I like order. 
praise God. Let things be done in decency and in order so it won't come out the wrong way, so people won't take it the wrong way. Uh, here it is. We'll get to it real quick. Let all things be done in decency and in order. It's in the Bible. I believe in order. I don't like a lot of things that's out of order. Look what it says here in, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40. Let all things be done in decency and in order. God is a God of order. It's order in heaven. It's order on your earth. It's order in the court. I preached a message a long time ago in the Baptist church called God wants order in the court. And it's not to bash. This is not to put down. I just want to let you know I love things be done in a certain way, in a proper way to be considerate. You can love somebody but then control your emotions. Love somebody but be considerate. Let them, you know, ask them, you know, just bite yourself over to somebody. How, oh, oh, we coming. In two days, we coming. We coming to your house. We'll ask, where are you available? Can we come to your house? You just don't invite yourself to somebody's house without asking, can we come? See, you got to have discipline. Didn't mean, they didn't mean no harm. I believe it was her idea. So he's coming, so he came from Harlem and she was from North Carolina. So I guess they met. I'm going to drive up here. Praise God. And, and we wasn't really ready. That's why I told her that uh, let, I'll let you know when we are available. Because we wasn't available then. That, that means you got to, you know, we're very hospital, you know, we're hospitality. Uh, we believe in hospitality. Fix food and this and that. We didn't have the money at the time. You want to prepare. We don't know they want to stay in the hotel. I just come back and come out and visit. We didn't have enough room in where we're living at. So it was a lot of things going on. So we have a gift of discernment. You'll consider it and say, well, you know, well, let's see if they're available. Can we come visit you when you have a chance to? We want to come visit you. We love you. Ask. You just don't invite yourself over like that. Say, I believe in things being done in the proper way. I also mention my brother. He's a man of God in North Carolina. He's a man of God. One time he friend requested uh, Lady Priscilla and didn't even let me know. Didn't even say anything about it. He gets aside, he gets a friend request. Praise God, didn't even call me and say, hey brother, uh, I want a friend request my sister-in-law, would it be okay with you? Didn't ask. They sort of told me that, you know, my brother friend requested him and it, I, it didn't set right. And you know, I love my brother, but be considerate. I wouldn't have did that to him. Praise him. Not that he meant any harm. I don't know if it's just a southern thing, in North Carolina, South Carolina, where y'all just in Invite yourselves because you want to show a lot of love and support. The love is there, but you, have, but you must have discipline with that love and be considerate with that love. I didn't friend request his wife like that and didn't let him know he thinks I'm considerate. I would ask him first, brother, can I be friends with her on Facebook? I wouldn't just friend request her and without telling the husband. It's about being considerate. It's about being respectful. One time there was a preacher, who I don't even know, he's a married man, friend requested my wife, friend requested Lady Priscilla, praise God for the Prince of Peace. He and, and didn't even ask me. And I already knew there was a seducing spirit there. I knew it was lust. Some of her family members friend requested me. And I, I even asked them in the inbox, did you let Lady Priscilla know that your friend requested me? You know, because we was in a three-year relationship, so we're trying to get situated. We're going through transitions. And certain people I don't always trust. Sometimes people talk so long, they don't know when to stop talking. And then you think they have the discernment to know when to stop talking. Some people don't have discipline. They'll talk, 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 talk. If you don't say nothing, they'll talk you until you sleep. And even when you sleep, they still talk. Then when you wake up, you don't woke up out of the sleep. Still talking, no discipline. Praise God. Ah, uh, come on. And then one time, there was a married couple one time that wanted me and Priscilla to go out with them to the restaurant. And I wasn't really discerning them. I wasn't designed. God showed me a dream. Don't go out with them. I see jealousy there. I see a controlling spirit there. You, you can't let everybody in your life, especially when you're newly married. Everybody ain't happy for you. There are those who are jealous, got the wrong spirit. So I'm very skeptical about people. Everybody shaking your hand don't mean they're your friend. Praise God. You have to have a gift of discernment. Praise God. So I'm just do things in a certain way. You know, uh, uh, um, I didn't feel led. Then all of a sudden now he talking about he wanted to be a preacher. He wants to ordain the man's wife and didn't even say nothing to the husband about it. One time there was a pastor one time on the phone with a man's wife, three, four, five hours. How are you on the phone with a man's wife and you not spend enough time with your wife? It's out of order. The man didn't say praise the Lord to her husband. 
She up on the phone all, not Lady Basu, I'm talking about another woman. She up on the phone all the way to one o'clock in the morning time. How's a married man talking to another man's wife on the phone all the way to one o'clock in the morning time and don't even say praise the Lord to the husband? He called himself having Bible study with this man's wife. He should have been having Bible study with his wife, her, and her husband. See, certain things I do, see, so I believe in doing things in order. See, I believe in doing things in the proper perspective. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. One time there was a man's wife called me up. She got her number from her husband's phone book. Praise God. <laughs> and she called me up like 2, 3 in the morning. I believe around that time. And I asked her. I said, do your husband know you're calling me? Oh, no, he don't know. I just called him for prayer. I said, but just to cover myself, because it's 3 in the morning, uh, wake your husband up, and I want you to let him know that you called me, okay? But, but he doesn't mind. I said, we don't know that, because let's say if he wakes up and you see and he see you on the phone with me, I don't want this man thinking I'm flirting with you on the phone, because you're calling 3 in the morning. So just let him know, daughter, that you're calling for prayer. So I said, wake him up. And she did that. She put him on the phone. I said, I want to let you know, just out of respect, that your wife called me up for prayer. Would that be okay? He said, that's okay, Preacher Warren. Thanks for telling me. It's about doing things in the proper manner. Praise God. You don't just invite yourself over. Praise God. She didn't mean no harm. She didn't mean no harm. It's not an issue. But I just want to bring understanding why I said what I said on the YouTube. Because I like things done in the proper manner. Praise God. In order. The person can mean well. They can love you. But it's about being disciplined. Praise God. Certain things, it was too much that was being said. So I don't want people to assume something negative about me and Lady Priscilla. She wasn't trying to hurt us, but it's about being done, things being done in the right perspective. Praise God. I believe in order. Praise God. Being considerate. Amen. I'm a gentleman. Praise God. A certain way you do things. Uh, I have a lot of examples. I can go on and on and on. Uh, me personally, I wouldn't. Uh, if that was me, if I want tips, I would have left it on a separate comment section so it won't look like that me and Lady Basilla is negative towards one another so people won't get the wrong idea. Praise God. So I had to do that because it was just too much said. And I didn't see no grammar mistakes uh, when she mentioned the other comments. It only went in, it's like the grammar was out of context when she talked about marriage. And I know it was referring to me and her. So I had to correct that because I believe in doing things in order. That's all I wanted to say. Praise the Lord. There's no harm doing. We love you. We love you. But when you have that love, have that consideration, I believe. Uh, one time, there was a woman one time in the church, about 25 years old. I used to give church services. Older lady, she gets up. And praise God. I respect my elders. She talking long, just long. Then she want to go preach. And I had to get up because if I didn't say anything, she would have took up the whole service. I said, oh, woman of God, we have to move on. You're too long-winded. Then she wanted to try to grab the mic to preach. I said, this is testimony service. This is not the time to, to preach a sermon. We already have a guest preacher here to preach a sermon. No, she wouldn't go on and on and talk, 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 talk. And this, I, hey, honey, if I didn't say nothing, she would have took over the whole service. I can't have that. I believe in discipline. Discipline. Well, I love you. We, we're not talking about the love. We're talking about discipline. See, a lot of churches are like that, you know. So I don't know if it's a southern thing. Well, that happens in New York City, too. <laughs> and they mean well. But but the Holy Ghost is supposed to give you that discipline. The, the Bible said the Holy Ghost is a teacher. Some people don't have friends or some folk can't make it in ministry because they just talk too much. You don't know when to stop talking. You just go on and on and on. And, and you can see the person is tired and they're sleepy. And you just go on and on and talk. Then you wonder why you got no members in the church or why they're not utilizing you in the church as a minister because you have to have discipline, know how to wind it down. Praise God. So we thank God for Sister Sarah Copeland. I love them and Anthony Copeland. They're such an awesome couple. I just wanted to address that because I believe in discipline. One time she left a text on my YouTube video and said she wanted me to hear her songs that she wrote. Well, I didn't really have the time to hear the songs because I'm ministering the word. Me and Lady Priscilla is going through transition. I'm trying to get my records out. You want me to call to collect all the way to North Carolina? That's money. We're trying to save. So I didn't mean any harm. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Because if I want to sit there and hear songs, that's going to take time. It's going to take time. So I, so I said, I'll let you know when I'm ready. Praise God. I'm talking about being considerate. So I hope she didn't take that in the personal way and think I don't care. I do care. It's the time and place for everything. I was not 
ready at the time. I was in process of getting my records out, playing the bass guitar and my music that I wrote. Not, so everything is timely. I didn't have the time to get on the phone, call away in North Carolina and, sit and hear all these songs on the phone. I didn't have the time for that. Praise God. It's not to be disrespectful. I'm just, I like to get, un, get you to get an understanding why I'm saying certain things. So I don't know if she took it personal. She disappeared. Didn't see her on the YouTube for a while. Praise God. And so she pops up all of a sudden now when she didn't see Lady Priscilla with me on the YouTube. And now she want to leave tips. And saying, well, don't be negative. Don't be petty. Don't boss your wife around. You Don't be petty with your husband. So that's why I was saying where all this is coming from. It was all negative. So if you, she meant to leave tips, then leave those that tips. If she meant to leave tips for everyone, you understand what I'm saying, brethren? Then leave that tip on a separate comment, not in the same comment where you just talked about an apostle, that me and the apostle Sarah, uh, apostle Sarah and me talked over the phone. What that had to do with what I was preaching about. Don't know her. God bless her. Praise God. So I took it in the spirit as, uh, well, says Preacher Warren, you didn't let us come over to your house. We came a long distance, and because you didn't call me on the telephone to hear my songs, then I'm just going to leave your ministry, and I'm with Apostle Sarah, and we talked over the telephone, and she's at least uh, giving me a chance to utilize my gifts. Uh, 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 this is what I'm seeing in the spirit world now. Uh, um, so, so um, she's an apostle, and you're supposed to be the apostle, but at least I got an apostle who give me attention. This is so now, uh, praise God. She then you said the apostle got you on the fast, and I went and said on the YouTube, Jesus said, When you fast, fast in secret, and then the Father will reward you openly. That had nothing to do with preacher Warren's ministry. So when I looked in the gift of discernment, I said, Yes, it seems like it seemed like a vindictive spirit because we did not allow her to come over to the house. Praise God. So, some people, so I'm not saying that's what it is, I just want to clarify. We hope you're not holding thing in the heart. There's no harm done. We was not available. Just pray for us. So then she went into don't be petty and don't boss your wife around and, 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 and wives don't be petty against your husband. She was preferring that. Uh, she was preferring that to people um, all around the world. But she put it. But she put it in the same comment when she didn't see Lady Priscilla around. She just said, "Well, I hope uh, you and Lady Priscilla is, is doing okay." Well, you just left it like that and just say, "We're praying for you." We're praying for you. But well, you're leaving tips, but it was all negative. It sounded like an accusation and you're making assumptions and you really didn't mean, mean it. Yes, you love us, but I'm talking about discipline. So that's what, you understand what I'm trying to say, y'all. So it won't look a certain way. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. It didn't mean no harm. I, I believe in doing things in a proper manner. That's all. Praise God. I like things being done in decency and in order. If you're going to have folk in the ministry, you want to be considerate of each other. That's what the Bible said, let women learn in silence. And be a subjection doesn't mean God don't use women. It's not a chauvinistic remark. Is that certain things you just don't say? Certain things the man should say to a young man, and certain things the woman should say to a young woman. But certain things you don't say it all out in the open so everybody can hear it. Praise God. So because it can bring a negative outlook on the married couple, and you have no facts of what's really going on behind the scenes. Just pray. Praise God. When God gives you something to say, He you know He'll tell you how to say it and when to say it. There's times where I preach the word and revivals. The Lord say, wind it down. I'm finished with you yet. Because I'm, because I'm finished with you now, rather. Some pastors, they don't know when to stop. One pastor, he had the church up there at almost at 2 o'clock in the morning time. Wife got, woman got kids. They got to get home. They got to get up for school. And the pastor just talk, 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 talk. Well, I want to say something else now. We didn't heard the man's talk for a whole hour. Then you want to talk a whole nother hour. Don't, don't know when to stop talking uh, and then and then want the church to stay there for two more hours and they sit there asleep and tired they said well you can't hurry god you can't rush god but god does things in decency and order meantime you got folk putting up preachers 12 o'clock midnight you didn't have like 10 choirs singing 13 selections and then you want to put the guest preacher up 12 midnight and expect him just to hurry on up well you only got 10 minutes no you get the man of god time to preach when I used to invite guest preachers to my services, I gave them time. I said, the choir um, and my services were saying two selections or three selections. 
make it brief. Let the Lord have his way. We're not trying to cut the Holy Ghost. Let him have his way. I believe in things to be done in see in order. Take up the offering. There's times I took up offerings before the man of God even got there. So the offering was already prepared. And then those who was not there would take up an extra offering for the man. You see, I want to put the man of God up early so he can have time to teach and preach the word of God. And not put him up no 12 o'clock midnight and give him 10 minutes and expect him just to finish. After folk just dancing and shouting, hear all these songs, thousands of songs. And then expect the man just to hurry up so we can go home. Oh, he too hard. Oh, he think things personal, not just the way I am. Let things be done in decency and order to give him that respect and not, I didn't want, I even told the ministers in love. Praise the Lord, my brother. God bless you. You're too blessed to be stressed. That's my Holy Ghost transit worker. So I believe in being considerate. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Uh, 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 I even told the elders, I had a meeting with the elders one time years ago in love. I said, don't talk long before the man of God give and preach. When I have a guest preacher, it's not your time to preach. After the man finished preaching, have a nice comment and encourage him and say, we, we enjoy the man of God. We enjoy how God used you. Keep up the great work you're doing for the Lord. We enjoyed you. Praise God. Don't go into trying to call a prayer line and laying hands on people and, and trying to re-preach a sermon and the man had already preached. And now you're keeping the church in for another hour and, we, and it's ready to go home. Kids got to get up for school. Let the Lord have his way. We can't cut the Holy Ghost, but the Lord also give us discipline. Because when the Holy Ghost has his way, it flows. The Holy Ghost don't drain you. He don't have everybody worn out. Everybody, no, every, folk are speaking in tongues. People are getting saved. Folk are getting healed and delivered. Let things be done in decency and in order. When it's your time to preach, it's your time to preach. Let the other man minister. Don't get jealous. Don't be competitive. Praise God. Don't try to outdo each other. It's about being considerate. Praise God. Many of you ministers want to go to a church where you just want to boss the pastor around and take over the man's church. And you want to uh, 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 take over the man's marriage and just invite yourself to their house. And, and then they want to get close to the pastor's wife and they just got married. And then you talking long on the phone, not considering that she's tired. And you just talk, talk, talk. Don't want to, don't know when to stop talking. And they're tired and you still talk. Some folk, you're talking yourself out of a blessing. God give us discipline. Oh, come on, come on. Well, let me come to your house tonight. Well, well it's, it's like 11 o'clock. Well, well, God is leading me to your house. And you up there in the house all the way to 5 in the morning time, and here you have a husband. And here you have a wife. That's, that's not order. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. And if you're all separated, one is in one state and one in another state, and then you're under a, a woman pastor, and not saying that God don't use women, but let's say she's bossy and she's masculine. And loose with the mouth and don't have no discipline and her and her husband is not together then she can influence other women in the church to be out of order with her husband out of order with his wife we believe in discipline you may mean well y'all may mean well you may have a lot of love in your heart but god also gives us consideration do it in love and consideration praise god like you see a young couple so well, they're young and we older than they are and uh, we have more experience than they do, so we can just, just invite ourselves to their house. I don't mind them coming to the church. When it comes to someone's house, you, you always say, can we come? Are you available? Uh, what day are you available if it's okay for us to come? And then we make that decision because we could be going through a transition. I don't have the finances. I was not enough room. We very people who believe in hospitality and want to fix food and dinner for you. That's how you do that. So it can be order in the church. So it can be order in families. Order. We believe in order and be considerate. So not that the love is not that the love is there, but I believe in discipline along with the love. Everybody didn't mean no harm. We know that. I guess that's just the way I am. I believe in it. Do I make mistakes? Yeah. God is still setting order with me too. So pray for me too. So we love you out there. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Praise God. Let me go right into the sermon. I know it was, it was kind of long, but I just wanted to say that uh, Jesus was speaking to me this morning when I woke up. Praise God for Tolliver. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Uh, let me call. I know I got a phone call in the middle while I was ministering. You see, this is very, might be very important. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Jesus. See, I miss his call. Let me see that I miss his. And then I will go into the sermon the Lord gave me. The Lord spoke to me and said his power has no limit. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah.
Hey, hey, brother Taliban. I'm right here on YouTube. Hold on one second, YouTube viewers. Yeah, I was a little YouTube. Yeah, is everything all right, my brother? Yeah, because that's the time when they do rituals, right? It'd it be rituals like Mondays and Fridays is the two days that witchcraft is done in rituals. And the spirit of influence influences uh, people who may have that in their background. Like doing the week in the middle of the week is okay. But Mondays and Fridays are the main days and you can sense that spirit. It makes them act a different way. It makes them switch. It makes them not respond. Yeah, especially on Friday. Monday and Fridays are the main days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, it's Friday. And then after Friday, then it, then probably this Saturday, back to normal. See, 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 that's that, see, that's that spirit in the spirit realm. Right, right. It's not you, and it's not even, it's, it's that spirit on Fridays. I used to go through that same thing, brother. I went through the same thing. And I always ask the Lord, what is it about Fridays? And, and, a, and a woman of God came to the YouTube one time. And said that they do rich that witches and warlocks do rituals Mondays and Fridays, same way that we go to church. Sometimes, like you know, people have services on the Sabbath day, or, or, or they go to church on Sunday. A lot of them have rituals like Mondays and Fridays. Sometimes even Wednesday. Remember that? Um, remember that girl Wednesday in the Adam family? Do 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 Adam family. Okay, why? One, you wonder why they call her Wednesday? <laughs> because sometimes they do ritual. Right. Sometimes they do rituals. Witches and warlocks do rituals on Wednesdays too. So they have certain times of the week where they do it like two, three in the morning time and they're not allowed to communicate with their spouses or something like that. They disappear and they go into soul traveling or mental mind telepathy or whatever. And then after that, they're all over, they're back to normal again. <laughs> so you're not imagining, brother. You ain't crazy, brother. You're not imagining. Yeah. Yeah, that got to be broken. Right, that's got to be broken. Yeah. Right, she's no right. She's normal then, right? But when it comes to Friday, right, before she wasn't. Notice Monday, that spirit was there. And notice Friday, that spirit is there too. So that's the yoke that has to be broken. So I'm in prayer with you right now, brother. I'm going to be, I'm on YouTube right now, and we're going to be putting our prayers. But you're not crazy, brother. You ain't crazy. You're not imagining, brother. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. See, see, that's not normal. See, see, that's that spirit, that, that yoke. That's the last yoke that has to be broken off of, and God gonna break it. And I just break it, God is gonna destroy that yoke so it won't be that problem no more. It won't be that vibe no more. Everything else is coming into place, but that part right there, that's the strong yoke, but God can break that. So, so we're gonna be praying in Jesus' name. Okay, Tolliver? Okay. Yeah. You, right, that's the Holy Ghost. Right, that's the Holy Ghost letting you know what's going on. Right. That's good. You start praying in the Spirit. Right. There you go. You're praying in the Spirit. Keep praying in the Spirit. I'm praying long with you because we're going to, God going to break that yoke in Jesus' name. Lord, break that yoke in Jesus' name. Yeah. Okay, brother. Listen. Um. Um, can I call you back? Okay, I'm gonna call you back, but but you're not crazy, brother. You ain't crazy. What you're seeing is right. So we're gonna break that yoke in prayer. Okay, yeah, so you're not crazy, brother. Okay, brother, let me call you back. Okay, God bless you, brother. I'm with you in the spirit, brother. Okay, brother, talk to you later. Bye bye. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Uh, some of y'all, God wanted to hear that because some of y'all could be going through the same, the same thing. This is a message that God gave me. Yeah, people called me up for prayer on the phone. Praise God, and um, that's my ministry, counseling people. And I praise God for you, prayer warriors. I praise God, uh, Sister Diane Shepherd, Brother Jackson, uh, Sister Sarah Coverton, Anthony Coverton. Y'all been such a blessing and may God continue to richly bless you in all areas of your life. And the prayers, yo, that went up for my toothache. Thank you for praying for me. It's still a healing process. Your prayers work. Your prayers work. And keep and continue to pray for me. Praise God. I'm humble. 
praise God. I'm very uh, down the earth person. I just like to do things in a certain way. Praise God. Uh, the Lord spoke to me, told me this morning that He's sovereign. Praise God, and that His power is nonstop; it doesn't end. And the Lord was speaking to me today. I want to also talk about my sermon today. is going to be about abusive women in the church. And I'm going to tie this into this. Uh, Jesus was telling me today, he said, they put these graven images up of me. They, they make these photographs of me. Jesus, Jesus Christ was telling me this this morning. So they have all these photographs of me, have these graven images of me, but they don't obey me. He said, they don't keep my commandments. Now, they are those who do obey God. So if it don't apply, let it fly. But what's the sense of having all these photographs of Jesus, but you don't obey Jesus? Jesus said, you love me, keep my commandments. Who is to say that Jesus was had blue eyes and blonde hair? The Bible didn't say he looked like that. I don't see that in the word of God. But the Bible did say how he looked in his immortal state. In Revelations chapter 1, verse 13, verse 14, his hair is like wool's wool, eyes is flame of fire, feet like fine brass, his hair is white as snow. That's how he looked in his heavenly state right now but we do not the Bible do not state how he looked um, here on earth now I know Jesus was in the region of color uh, when Herod uh, was out to kill Jesus the Messiah praise God he went he it was something like how it was back in the days of Moses when Pharaoh was after the deliverer who God was gonna raise up who was Moses he had the firstborn killed Herod did the same thing. He ordered for the firstborn to be killed to get to Jesus. The angel of the Lord, Gabriel, told Joseph in a dream, take Mary thy wife and flee into Egypt. Now, we know that Egypt, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Egypt is in Africa, where the great Sahara Desert is at, uh, where the hieroglyphics is written on the pyramid. But I don't believe in worshiping in false gods. I believe in worshiping one God. The Jews were called polytheism, which means to worship one God. No, not polytheism. They were called monotheism. Mono means one. Poly means many. Okay, the Jews were called monotheisms, which means to worship one God. They worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. Where the Egyptians were called polytheisms, even though that word is not in the Bible, but it's in history, which means to worship many gods. They worship false gods. So here I know when... They took Jesus as a baby and they went into Egypt. We know that Egypt is in Africa, so Jesus was in the region of color. And it wouldn't surprise me if Jesus was not uh, purely white. It wouldn't surprise me if Jesus did not have blonde hair. Speculation that he may have curly hair and that his face, the skin tone was more darker. I know they put these pictures up of Christ. He looks nice. The blonde hair and blue eyes and He's white, and, but I don't believe Jesus even actually looked like that. I believe he, he had a uh, skin, his, his skin complexion was darker. I believe that. Head might have been curly. And many don't realize that when Jesus carried the tree, the cross, it was actually a black man who helped Jesus carry the cross. Let me see if we can get into that right now. They don't talk about this too much. Um, then I'm going to go into why I'm talking on this subject to tie this in talking about abusive women i was talking about this on my other youtube we know there's a lot of we know there's many abusive men but there are a lot of abusive women too beating up on your husband verbally abusive so i'm gonna tie this in with this it was a black man who helped jesus carry the cross uh praise god for the prince of peace let's go into it According to the Bible, the man who helped Jesus carry the cross was named Simon Asarini. C Y mm -hmm. R E N E. And as Sarini is a city in North Africa, see that? Many people believe he would have been of dark skin. That's, that's interesting. Associated with black people in traditional interpretation. However, the Bible does not explicitly state his color but it says Simon of Sarini Sarine is a city in North Africa so that means he was black I know Sidney Poitier played that part in the other Jesus movie back in the 60s uh, I was very young then 
the greatest story ever told. Praise God. So Jesus was telling me this morning how people make images of him. Bluetooth. Heard his voice. I was so happy to hear the voice of Jesus because I've been hearing so many demonic voices and going through spiritual warfare. I've been going through so much in the past, past days. So it was a pleasure to hear my master's voice. He your master's voice. He loves you too. I'm not better than you. He was telling me how they, so they make all these graven images of me, have all these photographs of me, but they do not obey me. We're talking about the ones who are not obedient. They don't care nothing about Jesus. Oh, this is what he said to me. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord just brought it back to my memory. Thank you, Lord. God said, Lord, if I forget, Lord, bring it back to my memory. See, the Holy Ghost, you see how he brings back things back to your memory? The Holy Ghost said they mock me. He said they mock me. This is what he said to me. He said they mock him. He said they make all these graven images of me. They have the photographs of me, but yet they mock me. They do not obey me. That's what he said. I heard Jesus. He wasn't pleased. He was grieved. So just because you have an image of Jesus in your church, uh, you got an image of Jesus on the cross around your neck. It does not necessarily mean that God is pleased with you. And there's a lot of people who bow down to a statue of Jesus and Mary. And that's not Jesus. That's just a statue. And the Bible said, praise the Lord. God bless you, my brother. Hallelujah. When the Bible said we're not supposed to worship any graven images, we're not supposed to worship any idols. So that graven image they have of Jesus, that's just an idol. That's not Jesus. That don't make you holy just because you're bowing down to a statue of Jesus. Wearing the cross around your neck with Jesus on the cross does not make you holy. Praise God. It gets another image there. It's when Jesus is in your heart. You understand? When he's in your heart and you truly have repented from your sins. According to Acts 2.38 and Romans chapter number 10, verse 9 and verse number 10. When you truly repent from your sins and ask God forgive it. Not just confess. Now that you make confession, now you're obedient to his word. Jesus called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We're saved by grace and through faith. According to Ephesians chapter number 2, verse 8. Praise God. It's not a works that we're saved. Amen. That any man should boast. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Uh, the Bible also said in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, verse 2. I beseech you, brethren. God gave it to the Apostle Paul, who was uh, the apostle of the church. I beseech you, brethren. The chief apostle said it. Jesus is the chief cornerstone of the church, who gave this to Apostle Paul to get to the church. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is good and the perfect will of God. So God wants us to be holy. He wants us to present, he wants us to present our body holy. That's why God told Israel, be ye holy, for I am holy. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 44 and verse 45. Which applies to the church in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. He spoke through his apostles, Paul, uh, not Paul, Apostle Peter, to be holy, for I am holy. He spoke to the church, Aglesia. Our marriage to Jesus is supposed to represent our marriage to Christ. We are the bride of Christ. When you get saved, right there, you got married to Jesus. When you got born again, right there, that was your wedding day. Praise God. There's a difference between a wedding and a marriage. A wedding is a ceremony that only lasts for one day. But a marriage is supposed to last for a lifetime after you have the wedding and the honeymoon. So now after you get married to Jesus, after you got saved, uh, when you got saved, that was your wedding day. When you received Jesus, right there you got married to Jesus. Now you want to stay married to Jesus. Not just get, not just get saved and don't stay saved and then you backslide. That's why Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, Stand fast in the liberty where with Christ had made you free. Be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Don't be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Don't go back. God brought Israel out of Egypt. And as soon as God delivered them out of Egypt and they was in the wilderness, God then divided the Red Sea. They told Moses, we want to go back. And then what Israel did, they developed the same Egyptian traits and they began to worship a false god are graven images they took their jewelry off and made it into a golden image they took their gold chains off and made it into a golden calf and made god mad and made moses mad and god destroyed the israelites opened up the grounds and they went to hell come on so a lot of you don't realize that when you are saved you're married to jesus 
The Bible said, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Happy to see y'all today. God bless y'all. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Praise the Lord. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Women, love your husbands. Don't be a gold digger who wants to push the trigger. Do we make mistakes? Yeah. Then we forgive each other. We love each other. I want to talk about how there are a lot of men. We already know how a lot of men abuse their wives. Not every man abuses their not every, not every man is abusive. So we don't want to add all, all men in the same category. So if it don't apply, let it fly. But we don't talk about how there are abusive women. We don't talk about that in church. Oh, there are a lot of wives abusing their husbands. Cussing them out, starting fights. So when he get home, put the key in the door, she, she want to throw grease in your face. That's why many men don't come home with some of y'all. Because you know your wife huh, want to start a fight with you in the house. When the Bible said it is... It's better for a man to be on the corner of a rooftop than to be with a brawling argument with a woman. Praise the Lord, my brother. God bless you. Amen. That's my good Holy Ghost friends. The Bible said it's better for a man to be on the corner of a rooftop rather than be with a brawling woman in a White House. Corner on the rooftop because she is so wicked and so evil and jealous and gossiping on people and backbiting folk. Don't want to respect you. When I outdo you, oh, come on, come on. We're not just only talking about wives, we're talking about also women in general. It's like there's a lot of abusive men, there's a lot of abusive wives, a lot of abusive women even in church. Many of you are speaking in tongues, you got a prayer veil on, you got your white dress on, you're one way in church, and you're another way behind closed doors in the house. This is how women, this is how the devil want to use wicked women to trap you up. First of all, they want to trap you up with a baby. You gotta be careful with that. Someone will trap you up with a baby. The devil come as an angel of light. The devil come handsome. He come tall with big muscles and a six pack. But he's a wolf in a sheep clothing. The devil come pretty, but she's a witch who needs a switch for being a witch. This is what they do. They put a witchcraft in your food, pray over that food before you eat that food so God can sanctify it. Oh, come on. So, you surprised me, folks? Wanna put stuff in your food. She wanna take her period and put it in the spaghetti. So she can put love spells in your spaghetti. They come nice at first. Hi. Hi. Oh, wow. Oh, we just like you. And oh, wow. You're so nice. And watch them quiet ones. Watch some real quiet women. Some of them quiet ones, a lot of times, got the most skeletons in the closet. Oh, she quiet, but she doing witchcraft behind the closed doors. Oh, yeah, she quiet, but she got skeletons in her closet. You got to be careful with that. They want to invite you over to their house so they can put a witchcraft in your food so they can trap you up with a baby. The devil want to trap you up. That's why you must have your eyes on God so God can give you a gift of discernment because the devil want to sex you up with the wrong man and the wrong woman and they come pretty. They come nice. They come laughing. <laughs> and you don't know she's been sent by the devil. You don't know she's on assignment. She is a soulmate from hell. He is a soulmate from hell because the devil know you are anointed and the devil know you are destined for greatness so he wants you to marry the wrong one so they can break your heart that's how many people's hearts got broken because you didn't marry your enemy many of you are sleeping with the enemy Samson was sleeping with the enemy she was after his anointing the bible said and Samson loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah according to Judges chapter 16 verse 4 the bible never said that Delilah was in love with Samson it just said Samson was in love with her. Obviously, Delilah was not in love with Samson because if Delilah was in love with Samson, then Delilah would never have brought Samson down. She was sent by the Philistines to find out the secret of Samson's great strength. The anointing was in his head. She brought him down. Be careful who you get involved with. Don't get involved with a wolf so they won't hurt your heart. If you're involved with someone who's abusive, drop that zero and say God give you a hero and the hero is the Holy Ghost. You don't have to take no drug overdose. All you need is a Holy Ghost. You don't need no dope. God is a great hope. I'm not talking about the Pope. The Pope needs a great hope. You don't need no crack. Run the way of Christ is at. Get out the prayer mats. He'll set you free from crack and cocaine. When you get in God's domain. When you get in God's domain, he'll set you free from crack and cocaine. Be careful. You have abusive women. What they do is this. They want to first trap you up with a baby. You come nice and with a nice body. It's not a chauvinistic sermon. Come on, you also about abusive men. Abuse come in different ways. 
It's not always physical abuse. It can be verbal abuse, mental abuse, manipulation, deception. The Bible said in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, some in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. Jesus warned us about false prophets as well. Jim Jones was a false prophet. David Koresh was a false prophet. Reverend Ike was a false prophet. Reverend Ike came from the church I grew up in under Bishop Lawson. I came from under Bishop William Mabana. But Reverend Ike was under Bishop Lawson and go to Refuge Temple Church. He used to be a man of God, but when he left, he took my, send me lucky charms. The secret of good luck. That is, now luck is not in the Bible. Either you're blessed or you're cursed. The Bible didn't say lucky. He went off talking false stuff. There were nowhere in the word of God. There are many false prophets, even now. It's all around the world. They're on TV. They have seducing spirits. They're sorcerers. They remind me of Simon the Sorcerer. In the book of Acts chapter number 8, the Bible said that Simon the Sorcerer bewitched the city. Uh, he put a witchcraft on. Even the apostle Paul said in Galatians, who have bewitched you that you shall run well. You got to beware of seducing spirits, abusive spirits. They got Ouija boards. They're getting the information from tarot card readers and demon spirits and divination spirits and Ouija boards. When God said, regard not them who have familiar spirits and neither seek after the wizards. For I am, am the Lord your God. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31. Many of you are fighting false prophets who are abusing you in the spirit and false prophetess. I saw one so-called prophetess up there beat up on people with her mouth. Give me a thousand dollars. Give me your money and do this or else y'all going to hell and y'all ain't doing. That was abusive. Making people feel bad because they couldn't give a thousand dollars. When all they had in their purse probably just could have been five dollars. Even had the men scared. They didn't already have the money. And here she had her white robe up there going off on the church because they wouldn't give her a certain amount of money. The pastor should have got up and sat her down. And said, you ain't taking over my church. These are God's people. You don't bash God's people, but you love God's people. Jesus said to the angel of the church of Revelations, chapter number 2, verse 20, I have a few things against thee. Because thou suffered that woman Jezebel. Yeah, Jezebel, who called herself a prophetess. Jesus said, I didn't call her to be no prophetess. But she called herself to be a prophetess. She's a witch. She has a Jezebel spirit. She called herself a prophetess. Going around seducing my servants. Causing them to commit fornication. And eat things offered unto idols. And then Jesus said, I gave her time to repent. I gave her space to repent. But she repented not. Then Jesus go on to say in Revelations chapter 2 verse 20. And verse 21 and verse 22. He said, Behold, I will cast her into a bed with them that commit adultery, except that she repent from her deeds. Jesus said this. Yes, well, I thought he's love. Yes, he's love. But Jesus does not love sin. He hates evil. God also get angry. He was the one who cast the money chainers out the temple. He threw them out the temple because they was corrupting the house of God. So although Jesus is love, but the Bible said God is angry at the wicked every day. God's judgment is just as real as his love. Hallelujah. And then Jesus going to say, I will kill her children. Now that sound like an evil remark. Why would Jesus say that if he's love? Because Jesus knows that the children will come out just as wicked as a parent Jezebel. And not if not only wicked, but worse. Why you think God told Saul to kill the whole city? But no, Saul was not obedient. He left Agag alive and killed the rest of them. He did not follow the instructions of God because God knew if he didn't have the whole city killed, they would have came against Israel. They was all devil worshipers. They was wicked. Oh, come on. Abusive in the spirit. Come on. They want to chop you up with a baby because they, they want something of you. But he noticed, see now, and then the wicked side of her began to come out. You didn't know she was that wicked at first. Allah want to trap you up with sex. The devil want to trap you women up with the wrong men, as well as the wrong women, through sexual activity. The devil know that you're searching for love, but just in the wrong places. You might have got molested, or sexually abused, and you're searching for love to satisfy you, but the devil sent you the wrong one when, at a time when you're vulnerable. It's a trap. 
trap you up with a baby, put the period, put it in the spaghetti, put the witchcraft in there to put you on the spell. That's why you must fast and pray. Live holy every day. Praise God. Stay in your Bible. Stay in God's word. You should let my words abide in you and you abide in my words. Let my words abide in you. Now you can seek and you shall find and knock and the door shall be open. Now, why? Because you in God's will. You in, but when you're not in God's will, you could be deceived. Tell someone, don't be deceived. And then many of you married the wrong one. Many of you older women want to get involved with a young man. Nothing wrong with that. But some of you have a controlling spirit. And now you're beating on your husband. Just like many of you beating on your wife. I don't believe in abuse. I don't like child molesters. Child molesters are going to hell. You're supposed to protect the child and not molest the child. Children from God is a gift. How can you molest your own daughter? How can you molest your own child? It's wicked. It's evil. You sex abusers up in the Catholic Church, up there raping little boys and girls, you're going to hell. Even in the Pentecostal churches. Come on. Come on. God don't like it. God ain't got no child molesters, not in his church. God ain't got no witches and warlocks, not in his real church. Every church ain't God's church. It's an abusive church. If the, if the leader is abusing his members, if he's letting child molesters be in the pulpit, Bluetooth mode. If the pastor is allowing the priest to be a child molester and he knows it, get out that church. That ain't God's church. That's the devil's church. We supposed to be the church. God ain't got no witchcraft in this church. When you present your body to God and your body become the temple of the Holy Spirit, your body become the church. You are the church. Hallelujah. Praise God. The devil want to use her to trap you up with a baby. The devil want to use her to put a witchcraft on you. Be careful what you eat. Always pray over the food before you eat it. Before we putting stuff on the food, putting spells, trying to put you on the spell. And see if they're trying to get a man and putting, trying to put spells on. See if they're trying to take someone else's husband, take someone else's wife. And this stuff goes on in church. Not every church. So if it don't apply, if, if, if it don't apply, let it fly. Some of you older ones want to control that man. You soul traveling, going outside your body. Then after you get married, then all of a sudden now there's separation. Now she got something of yours, your son, now your daughter. And you know if you don't pay that child support, then you're going to jail. Now she got some on you. Now you become a slave. Now you become a henpeck. You're afraid now. Because you, now the devil fighting against your finances. You're taking all your money. Now that child had to be taken care of. You got to take care of your child. But see, many of you got children with the wrong man. Many of you got children with the wrong woman or the wrong man. If you're going to have children, have it with the right man or the right woman. So y'all can raise the child together in the Lord. Train up a child in the way they should go. So when they depart from it, so when they grow old, they will not depart from it. The devil want to trap you up with an abusive woman. A witch. You do soul traveling. Or, or an abusive man. So some of you are under spells. Oh, come on. You're bound. It's a soul tie. You try to get involved with the right one. Is she coming back? Want to get a bad name on you? Want to mess your reputation up? Fighting against your finances? Then you know you don't pay that child support in time. She can lock you in jail. It was a trap. All along, it was a trap. Tell someone, watch the trap. It was a trap. You can escape that trap. Many of you women got trapped up. You lust, seduction, spells, witchcraft. Now they cussing at you in the house, starting fights with you in the house. You can't hardly even concentrate on your ministry. They having out of body experiences. Oh, come on. You can't hardly concentrate on serving the Lord because now you're being distracted. You're being drained. Oh, come on. Many of them are women pastors, men pastors. Even though you can preach the word, but you're draining your husband out. You don't want him to walk into his calling. You want him to be a henpeck. And then when he take a stand, now you want to get a bad reputation on him. Oh, he's abusive and, and he's bossy and it's not even that way. It's that you want to run him. You was assigned by the devil to bring him down. That's why it's separations a lot of times in most, a lot of marriages. You gotta see two sizes of the story. The Lord let me see this thing in the spirit because a lot of this stuff ain't being preached about. She want to trap you up with a baby. She's a witch. She wants to trap you up with a baby. So be careful. 
do not go to bed with her. She want to trap you up with a baby and put a witchcraft in your food. And then don't want you to see your son. Don't want you to see your daughter. She's argumentative. They want to take your child to other men, bringing them in their houses and all this stuff. She wants to provoke you to rage and anger. Get you out your character because she like those roughnecks. They talk, they talk about good girls love bad boys. They don't sound like no good girl to me because you're provoking that man of God and want to bring a gangster out of him so he can go to jail. That's not a good girl. That's not a good man. She want to trap you up. Now you're not free to do what God have you to do. She want to trap you up with a baby. She want to put a witchcraft in your food. She want to have you under a spell. Doing voodoo, evil voodoo. I know you say that's your religion, but that's still wicked. Come on, come on. Many of you men got trapped up. Many of you women got trapped up. And lie me, you go to church. You do praise and worship, but you're not worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Uh, come on, you got to be careful. That's why she's taking you to a lot of changes. She skipped the frenzy. I buy polo. Those are demon spirits that has to be cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. She can be free. Many of you have been with the wrong ones. And you have a hard time getting away. We're going to pray the prayer of faith that God will break that yoke. That's why you be getting sick. You be getting nightmares. Demons been bothering you because you're sleeping with the enemy. Do not sleep with the enemy. I want to get with Jesus Christ. Many of you are sleeping with the enemy. That's why you've been having nightmares. Demons been bothering you at night with the wrong woman or the wrong man. They're in your house. They already opened up portals for evil spirits to come in the house. They're worshiping idols. That stuff got demons. Throw it away. You unequally yoked. Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. What fellowship do darkness have with light? The Bible said, can two walk together except they be agreed. If you got to pull away and walk by yourself, you're walking with Jesus. She want to trap you up with a baby. She want to put a witchcraft on you. The devil come pretty. He come with a nice shape. The devil come with a nice body. Don't fall for the trick. It's a trick. It's a trap. Do not eat everybody's food. They're putting Spanish fly in the food, putting witchcraft on the food. But tell the devil you a liar. Ain't no weapon formed against me. Shall prosper. Hallelujah. I plead the blood of Jesus. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The devil don't want you to serve the Lord. But say, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to serve the Lord. Don't let them break you. Don't let them break you. The devil want to break your heart. He want to break your spirit. He wants to make you lose your anointing. But say, I came too far to turn back now. I came too far to turn back now. Someone to control you with money. If you're going to give money to somebody, give it out of your heart. Don't give it to, to control people. Do not give gifts to control people. Give it out of your heart. Be genuine. They don't want you to be on your own. They don't want you to have your own apartment. They don't want you to have your own business. They want you under their control. They want to give to you so they can control you. They're not giving out their heart. Some of them, when they give money, they're putting witchcraft on the money. They're doing rituals on the money. And the satanic ritual, they when they give you the money, the demons jump off the money and, and attack you and got you under the spell. But say the blood of Jesus. That's why I got this vest on right now. It said the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. I knew. I knew it was the blood. I knew it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. There is power, power. One didn't work in, sing it with me all. One didn't work in power in the blood of the Lamb. Glory adios, last is Jesus. There is power, power. One didn't work in power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Healing in the blood of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Joy in the name of Jesus. Call the name of Jesus. Yeshua HaMashiach. I am a believer. Glory to Dios. Glory to Jesus. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. The demons are coming out right now. Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord.
They're coming out right now. Sitting back to the pits of darkness. Witchcraft is breaking. In the name of Jesus, make the demons leave. Make the demons go back to hell. Send your angels, God, in the midst. You said, goodness and mercy ha, will follow you. Ha, will follow us all the days of our life. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Lord, make the devil run. Lord, break the demon of witchcraft. Lord, let it be a good spirit. Lord, save that person's soul. Lord, break that spell off that man, off that woman. In the name of Jesus, make the demons run back to hell. In the name of Jesus and God, you take control. Whoa. Somebody being healed. Somebody being delivered. God gonna work a miracle for somebody today. Whoa! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. There's a miracle coming to y'all. Ah, don't you feel the anointing coming through to you too? I can feel it. There's a miracle coming to you. A miracle. The devil be trying to hold up your finance. The devil be trying to hinder you. But there's a miracle coming to you. Just have faith and believe. With God, all things are possible. If Jesus arose Lazarus from the dead, after he been dead for four days, Jesus is the only one who I know who could be late and still be on time. <laughs> He's on time, God. Yeah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God can tell death to go back to hell. It's not her time to go. God can set you free from cancer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God can tell death, go back to hell. I am the resurrection and the life. Ha. Though he was dead, yet shall he live. I feel like preaching. Ha. And he that believeth in me shall never die. Don't wait till the battle is over. Oh, Lordy, 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 Lord. Ha. I feel Jesus, but shout right now. When the praises go up, ha. the blessings will come down. Long the bridge is falling down, falling down. Your miracle is on the way. God will make cancer disappear out of your body. God will make arthritis huh, disappear out of your body. When you call on Jesus, he'll answer prayer, saints. He'll answer prayer. He's a prayer answering God. When the saints of God begin to pray, the Lord will have his way. The glory of the Lord is coming down. How in the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, witches are running. The demons are running. Witches, if you're going to run, run to Jesus and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm a switch for being a witch and I'm coming to Jesus. I'm a switch for being a warlock. I'm coming to Jesus. Forgive me for my sins. Wash my sins away. Search my heart, God. I don't want to go to hell. I'm not perfect. Lord, help me, Lord. Say, Lord, I surrender. Praise the Lord, one of God. I'm happy to see you. God can help you. Just say, Lord, I surrender. Lord, say, I need your help. God will help you in the time of trouble. He's a bridge huh? over troubled waters. Ain't that right, woman of God? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Y'all know the song that saved a wretch like you and me. I feel like preaching. Ha. I once was lost, ha, but now I'm found. You used to be blind. Oh, oh Lordy, 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 Lordy. I can I preach, but now I see. We can praise God in the street. We can praise God on the basketball court. I can praise the Lord anywhere. If you can sell drugs in the street, if you can rob each other on the street, and you can stab each other on the street. Why not lift up Jesus on the street? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm tired of the devil. I'm tired of the crime that's in the world. I'm tired of the racism. God don't hate black skin. God hates a black heart. Don't let love depart. You're not a nigger. You a winner. Killing each other don't make you a winner. But loving each other make you a winner. Same way God don't hate white. God hates spite. Love one another. Pray for each other. Don't be jealous of one another. Don't do witchcraft against each other. And don't abuse each other. But love one another. That's Christ. Have love you. Hallelujah. Jesus said by this. All men will know you by disciples. If you have loved one for another. 
Don't abuse your husband. Don't abuse your wife. Don't abuse women. Don't abuse men. Many of you have been abused when you was young. You might have been sexually abused. You might have got molested when you was a girl or a boy. And that's why you don't like yourself. And you've been searching for love, but just in the wrong places. Stop right here. Jesus has open arms to embrace you with his love. He loves you all today. God bless your daughter. God loves you so much. And your son. I'm praying for your son. Ah, oh, hallelujah. There's a miracle coming to you and your son. A financial miracle. God bless you. There's a miracle coming to you. We're praying for you today. Ah, oh, hallelujah. There's those who've been bound by witchcraft and being tormented by demons. God can send angels to make the demons leave you alone and can give you a peace of mind. Woo! Hallelujah! The presence of the Lord is here. He loves you today. We're praying for those who got molested when you was a girl. It's not your fault. It ain't your fault that you got molested, so don't blame yourself. You're not dirty. You're special. God bless your daughter. I'm so happy to see you. I come to you over here. I don't want you in the street. I come to you. God bless the woman of God as I pray for her right now and her son. Lord, we thank you, Lord. You shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. We're going through a long battle for a long time, always holding up other people, always praying for others, praying for your children. But we come against every attack of the enemy. It tries to cause struggles in her life. Your struggle will be over. We're not saying that we're not going to go through, but he'll hold you by your hand. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And for Jesus, we will stand. Lord, she had one many, one many souls. I hear Lord said, God has given you favor, favor, favor. He's going ah. to give you favor. Certain ah. things, you don't got to pay for it. Ah. You don't got to pay for certain things. I don't know what that is, but, but God is going to give you special favor. God going to give you favor with people. So you can have this, it's free. <laughs> you can have this, it's free. Ah. It's favor, because you've been faithful. Yes. Uh, he's, he's moving enemies who have worked against you in your personal life. In the name of Jesus Christ, who've been jealous and hating, play hating, coming to you in the spirit and soul travels and witchcraft, that's gone. No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. Generational curse is broken. We thank you, Lord, for the finances that's going to flow through her, through her hands, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, her health is going to keep, keep getting better and better and better and better and better in the name of Jesus Christ. God has given you a new strength. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee, and my strength is made perfect in weakness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Matthew Matthew Aaron. Aaron. Yes. And the other one is Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony. Matthew told me, Mommy, I hear my father, he's saying, Deborah, I still love you. And then he said, and then the sentence just floated away. I see, he married a Spanish woman. Their boy is 17 and the girl is 16. But yes. she divorced him. She divorced him. I'll get talking about that while I'm preaching. Yeah, she something went. he did. I'm picking up my spirit. It's something he did for her, too. It says dissolution of marriage. Raina Marisol. Yeah. They're out there in California. Yeah. I said, don't hold nothing against him. If he's on his deathbed and he, he just take his hand and pray for him. Yeah, that's right. Make sure. He, but mommy, he left him when we was two years old and 10 months old. I yeah. said, there's women that are no good and men that Oh my God, I just preached that. This is coffee. Do you hear me on YouTube land? My message was, there's witches in the church who Ooh. abuse men and their wives. No, yes. no, I said there's wives in the church who abuse their husbands yes. and their witches. I was just talking about this on the YouTube. Yeah. Now you just a confirmation what I was just talking about. Uh, now, you, now we didn't talk about this, right? Mm. That ain't number confirmation from the Lord. God is breaking that yoke. I heard in the spirit, the Lord said, tell your spiritual son, tell him. Yes. There's mean, bad women. You heard that? Good men. Oh, and there's good men. Yes. You heard that? What I just talked about that on YouTube? She wasn't here. I'm a prophetess, Deborah. <laughs> Prophet? This ain't no. Deborah. Now this is a true prophet is here. This is not a Jezebel. This is a true prophetess of God. You weren't even here. I'm going to talk about that. I know. You, it, I don't believe in that palm reading and crystal ball nonsense. Psychic. That's right. No, they're psychotic. Yes. You leave Jesus out and you're psychotic. That's right. I don't believe in psychics. No. Why should I pay somebody to tell me a lie when I can go to the most high? Go ahead. Free. Go I'm ahead. Free. Woo! Tell the truth. Hallelujah. I'll say it again. Say Why it should again. I pay a psychic yes. money to tell me a lie when I can go to Jesus for free? That's right. Amen, prophets. Listen, we're going to talk some more. I yes. feel the anointing. 
Oh, hey, I feel the Holy Ghost. The presence of God is here. God is on. That's a confirmation. Thank you, woman of God. I'm proud of you too, mom. I love you, prophetess. Wow. Hallelujah. You already saw her to me already. She's in heaven. She having a Holy Ghost party in heaven. Ha <laughs> ha. Cutting the step. Yes. Yes. Wow. Jesus. Amen. We're going to talk some more. I love your prophetess. God bless your mother. Preacher Warren. Thank you, mom. God bless you, prophetess. Oh, that was nothing but a confirmation from the Lord. That was, you can't tell me that wasn't God. That was God. She wouldn't even hear what well, I talked about this sermon. Here she on the subject. It happened to her son. The same thing. Got involved with a witch. There's abusive men and there are abusive women. Two wrongs don't make it right, but God can break the yoke. We're going to pray right now the prayer of faith. This ain't nothing but the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Father, those who's going through with abusive wives and abusive women in the church, break that yoke right now in the name of Jesus. Many of you are slaves in your own house. You're slaves in your own marriages. But God is setting you free. And who the Son set free, he's free indeed. We speak life into your life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We hope you enjoyed this message. And the correction, praise God in love. We love all of you. We're praying for you out there. Pray one for another. Love one another. Let's treat each other right. Let's be considerate of each other. Let's not compete with each other. Because we're all trying to make it in. If you got to walk by yourself, at least you're walking with Jesus. Every day with Jesus. God bless y'all this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. It gets sweeter than the day before. Anyone who want to send to our cash app, our cash app. This flame of fire eight under Pastor Warren Adams. Praise the Lord. Uh, don't get mad at me. This time I tell the truth. That's the way God made me. I love all of y'all. Praise God. To God be the glory for the things he have done. Cash App Flame of Fire 8 under Pastor Warren Adams. Again, we thank God for those Lady Priscilla informed me which you sent to the Cash App Flame of Fire 8 under Pastor Warren Adams. I've led the prayer to prayer of faith again. We're praying for that drug addict who wants to be saved. We're praying for that drug, uh, that God set that drug addict free from drug addictions. Now you can get addicted to Jesus. You don't need no drug overdose. You just get the Holy Ghost. With the, hey, oh, God bless y'all this morning. I'm happy to see y'all today. I'm praying for y'all right here on, on my knees. God bless your family. Thank God for these young people. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. We're praying for the two young people. That young man and his young lady continued to bless them God filled them with the power of the Holy Ghost they felt the word, they felt the prayer we're praying for you and your children we're praying for your marriages we're praying that God will turn your tears into joy Just if you don't have Jesus in your life say Lord come into my heart and save me I confess my sins be Lord of my life repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost this is the promise that God has for you and your children praise God and God can make your life brand new. God can do a transformation on your life. Even while I'm speaking right now. God is breaking spells. He's, he's, he's destroying yokes. For this is the anointing that destroys the yoke. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by my spirit, says the Lord. God bless you. God bless the police force. Bless them, Lord. As they fight crime, save them. And with the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. That those who want to send to my cash app is flame of fire eight. On the pastor Warren. God bless all of y'all. Hope you enjoyed this word. If you didn't, it was all in love for the saving of souls. Praise God from the prayer warriors out there. Uh, Sarah Coberton, Anthony Coberton, God bless you. We love you. Diane Shepherd, Handmaiden, Brother Jackson, Hockey. I can go on and on. Even, my, even the one um, church in Texas. Praise God for you. We continue to pray for me and Lady Priscilla as we're praying for you. And praying for all of you out there. Something, don't forget, Flame of Fire 8 under Pastor Warrior Adams. Move here, born. Love your post. Amen. Tolliver, Angela, Michael Sterup. Praise God. Call some more names out in the future. And most of all, Jesus Christ. 
our Lord and Savior and King. We love you, Jesus. Don't forget something good will happen to you because Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. We'll see you again. God bless you. Something good is going to happen to you. Happen to you. Happen to you. Something good is going to happen to you. Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. Something good is going to happen to you. Happen to you. Happen to you. Something good is going to happen to you. Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. God bless you. We see you again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.